Well, well, hello there everyone, I am Lerman and welcome to my first guide video where I thought I'd be featuring the Grand Spe, because thanks to the Odin event there are a lot of these things running around right now. And a lot of people don't seem to quite know how to play this ship, I mean it is like a hybrid between a cruiser and a battleship so like how are you really supposed to play this thing? Well its guns are certainly behave more like a battleship, I mean look at those turrets on there. But its armor scheme probably makes it play a bit more like a cruiser. Now she is quite beautiful. I mean personally I think German ships are are quite something to look at. I mean those turrets look really mean, but don't be deceived, they are very RNG dependent. Now look at that matchmaking. <laughs> the enemy team has three Graf Space. The only cruisers they have are Graf Space. So they will showcase for us how not to play that ship. I mean, not to be condescending, but this is why I'm making this video. Now, if you look at the map, you can see that both teams are just, you know, headed sort of towards the border. There are the two Grosh bays on the enemy team, the other one is on the, on the other side. CV goes in for a strike, doesn't get much. And so now I decide to turn around because we are both headed the same direction. And that means that I am going to be shooting at them when they are angled towards us. I don't want that, of course. I want to be shooting at the broadside. So I turn around and start heading towards like the middle area. And now watch what I do here. This is something that you can pull off in virtually any cruiser. I'm turning around. I get spotted when I'm broadside and I just slow down. Everybody starts focusing me, of course, but everything lands in front of me. Because nobody expects you to slow down, because they, they would think that you would try to accelerate out of being in a broadside position. Those were some lovely pens right there, by the way. And by the time that their next solo gets here, I have already accelerated and gotten out of the way. I have angled away, so I have gotten away with barely taking any damage, being broadside to the entire enemy fleet. So more nice pens over there. And that you should probably know, because when you're going to be playing the Graf Spe, you are going to be facing other Graf Spes a lot. And so you have to know that the Graf Spe can very much citadel itself, or at least consistently pen it. Now that Westeros over there is doing a suicide rush, so that's taking their attention up nicely. And now one very important thing you have to know is that this ship has awful RNG, <laughs> as you can see right there. So let's quickly jump out of this match and let me show you just how awful that RNG really is. So here I am in a tier 7 match I believe and I come across the best possible target that you can shoot at in this ship which is an Omaha because it has like the most perfect armor to fuse your AP. Because this ship's AP is really high velocity, that's a lovely overpair right there on the funnel. <laughs> And it's got a really long fuse, so it get, it, it generally overpens a lot of stuff. But the Omaha's armor is like so perfect. Look at that. The AP goes right in and detonates in his citadel just like that. The second one, there you go. 8400 per citadel because these guns are quite large. And then someone finishes him off. But, RNG give it, RNG take it away. Here's a broadside by Yoni. Well, he's actually broadside to our entire team because we've all decided to group up in the middle because low tiers. Well, I say that, but it actually happens at top tier as well, so whatever. Anyway, so here I'm just taking pot shots at him because he's literally coming to a stop, like almost perfectly broadside. He's actually angled a little bit, which will probably help me fuse my AP if I were to hit it in the right place because. These guns depend on RNG so much and whenever you are shooting a Russian cruiser that has like no armor, like the Bajoni, it just doesn't hit on the waterline. Here goes a full solo at him now and one pen which was into his turret. Absolutely fantastic, right? And I also got set on fire by a DD of all things at the same time because well, our team is just falling apart and then my next solo just hits the island. Moving on in this match, here coming around the island is a completely broadside Kirov now. 
So once again, I take a swing, a full AP broadside salvo. And once again, absolutely nothing. Again, the one pen I got was actually into a secondary turret which got taken out, very useful. Notice how, by the way, the Koenig takes a shot at me, and here the armor actually works, look at that, I take barely any damage. But I take a second salvo at the Kiro, again, none of the shells end up on the waterline. That, that's the thing about this AP, right? It just, it works only half the time. So, anyway, coming back into this match, I'm not just taking pot shots at the battleships. And now, here's the thing, there are like two ways to play this ship. You either do nothing but spam AP at everything all game, which is like what all of the Russian cruisers do at top tier now, because, like, how many times have I seen a Russian cruiser radaring a DD and then firing AP at it? Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and then there is the second playstyle where you actually load the HE. Now, when should you? Well, one example would have been like right there, where the AP is not really gonna do you anything. Which is basically just firing at uh, angled battleships. That's that's probably one of the better times you should load the, load the HE. Right here you can see a bit of the armor not really doing its job, although it did fine. Uh, the Grosh gets spotted by the CV, so I take a pot run and actually score a Citadel. Uh, the Rucho was going to take him out, but I got a bit greedy there. <laughs> I really wanted that. Anyway. Back to the HE, it is quite lacking because its awful damage is, is really low and so is the fire chance actually, which just makes you even more dependent on RNG if you decide to shoot things like battleships with it. And you can see the armor failing right there, I just took an 8k salvo completely angled. And actually, to give you better examples of how bad the armor is and how the HE performs, here's another game <laughs> where we actually start off by shooting the broadside of a Russian cruiser again. So you probably can guess what's going to happen here. Yeah... <laughs> it really, it really refuses to work, huh? Anyway, here I get focused by two cruisers and in a moment a Piotr is gonna show up as well. And you will see just how quickly I will start melting. I'm just further trying to score citadels on the shores. And look at that. Two pens into his turret. Fantastic. <laughs> and it doesn't even get knocked out, which is like... It just makes it even better. Anyway. Um, <laughs> the guy just casually detonates on our team, as, as they do. And you can see, like, you just start taking pens, you get set on fire. And you quickly realize how useful that heal on this ship really is, because I'm already down to half HP, like I'm just trying to gather myself back to like 3 quarters. After all of this HP comes in, I decide to put that fire out, which is, well, a mistake, because the short gets really lucky and immediately sets it back. But, in retaliation, I at least get a solo off that finally manages to score a citadel and a 16k, like I got some nice extra pens next to that. Now let's jump ahead and here I actually load HE because the place gets pretty infected with DDs. Here's an Opniotic, or however you pronounce it, and look at that dispersion. Now that seemed like a nice HE damage right there, 5k, but you have to consider that that dispersion was like 1 in a thousand. Like you are not going to get that dispersion every time. Octiotic is a really interesting ship by the way, like, that thing is literally just a ship with guns and torpedoes, like, just all the way along the length of the ship. Anyway, my second solo was pretty lucky there too, got some nice damage, and look at it just dumping all of its torpedoes, but thanks to the Hydro, they are pretty easy to avoid. And actually, while we are talking about the Hydro, it's, it's, uh, the Hydro is actually, like, in between that of the German Hydros at top tier, well even lower tier actually, and the Hydros that other nations get, because German Hydro detects ships at 6 kilometers and Torps at 4 I believe, and um, other nations get a Hydro, <laughs> look at that dispersion, Jesus, and other nations get one that detects ships at 5 and torpedoes at 3.5 I think. But this, this Hydro actually detects ships at 5.5 and torpedoes at 3.75. It's just, 
the numbers right in between, which is interesting. This cane here, <coughs> just, you know, trying to actually do some damage to him. He gets himself spotted by shooting. But you can see that, like, even if you hit shots, well, a thousand damage, sure. But, like, thanks to the reload, you are not going to end up doing all that much damage to them. And you can see that with even all of the HE shots that I have hit, I haven't actually set a single fire. Now that usually over there, tier 5 premium, really OP. They were going to move it up to tier 6 as well, but the community had an outcry about that, so that never actually happened. But that guy will teach me how awful this ship's armor really is. Look at that, Salvo. And look at my health. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even sure what happened there, like was that a citadel or something, or if he just got really lucky with a lot of pens, but yeah, he did like 10,000 to me in that Sohu, and I was fairly angled as well, and it seemed like the shells just all hit my nose as well. And the Julio's guns, they are fairly low carryable for a battleship as well, and here I'm angling fairly, or at least I thought enough, but clearly not, because I get deleted. So that's the armor of this ship, so, well, if you angle it, you can get lucky. Again, this ship is so dependent on RNG, because when you angle, it's just, it's pure luck whether you are going to be able to bounce everything on the lower belt, or, or get pen like that by the Julio. Now here's the third Grosh pair of this match, and he's showing me perfect broadside, so of course I'm gonna take a shot. And as I've said, this ship can citadel itself, however, I, um, I don't, yeah, what is, <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there, but I get one over pen, and I guess a pen into one of his turrets. So, no citadels, or even pens for me. I take another shot, this one turns out a bit better, I actually get some pens. And so, I'm just like trying to move around, see like, what targets can I really shoot in this match? Like, I'm just constantly looking for what's showing me broadside and just going for that. I got pretty lucky right there, none of those shots even come close. I'm really hoping someone will take that Fusa out because he's really annoying me. Like, he has been shooting at me non-stop this match. Well, he will get killed in a moment, but jumping ahead here a bit because it's just a boring now this New Mexico is really close and I get some nice dispersion, nice damage right there, 7k. Two torpedo protection hits however, those are, those torpedo protection hits man. The amount of times they have saved ships from getting citadeled from me is unreal. Like it's so annoying because you, you pen the torpedo protection but you don't pen the armor behind the torpedo protection, look at that, that was those are some lovely bounces right there from the New Mexico, he shot really low, so we took literally zero damage right there. Now, those guys are not great targets, just seeing how fast that guy's going, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start focusing this Bayern over here. A CB for the first time actually enters my A range. So yeah, about the AA of this ship, right? It's it's alright, I guess. Although, of course, there is no such thing as good AA in this game. So, you know, don't expect to actually be able to slaughter squadrons or anything. But the AA is alright. And the fighter definitely helps out. But the CV will usually get two strikes in regardless. And that solo right there was beautiful. 9k. Lovely stuff. Switching over to the Normandy because the island is in the way for the Bayern. I hope it's a Bayern. I'm calling it a Bayern, but I really can't see it on this screen. Again, jumping ahead because not much happens and well, we are pretty close to winning this game now. I'm just trying to chase down this this last Bayern over here. I pronounced it so badly. Bayern. I am, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I did learn German, but <laughs> it's just... Oh, look at that, I actually got good dispersion, but it's not enough to kill him. Of course, those AT shells also didn't set a fire, but look at this, my very first secondary hit sets a fire. I swear to god with secondary fire chance in this game, it's like a hundred times better than main battery fire chance. Like, 
when you when you play a secondary ship or you know a ship with good secondary armament the secondary is either set an insta fire or they don't set one for like a hundred hits like it's so odd <laughs> like the one fire i have in this game is from secondaries and i've been firing H now here and there so here you can get, you can see the AA and how of course it won't get you far. Set to set to fire. I'm not gonna put it out. They do burn longer on this ship for cruisers because you know it's like a battle cruiser. I don't put it out because I know he can make another strike probably even with my fighters. And here they come, and you can see that they indeed set two additional fires. So. It was wise not to put the first one out. And now the CV is just panicking, he's getting chased by everything. By the way, the New Mexico at one point almost capped, but then exited like the last second. <laughs> that guy threw away a lot of his XP. And look at that, the CV is accelerating right in front of me. And I, I had Ichi loaded, I fired there, and look at that, all of them torpedo protection it. But the torpedoes do bring us home the devastating strike and the win and well it's a pretty fine game for Nugrav Spe even though we only got two citadels and ideally you wanna you know have like a lot of those or at least that's what I think is most fun about this ship to be to be just going around and citadeling cruisers like it's a bit still clubby but I mean if, if they are gonna give it us for free then you know well a lot of people are going to come down to this tier and play it anyway so I think we should now move on and see what build I play these games with and you know like what ones I recommend so here she is emerging from the dark or from the shadows of the blimp with her decorative camouflage that you get while unlocking it with the dockyard so I, I didn't exactly play this with any fancy setup like you can see that the the upgrades are just your general ones I went for this one because fires can hurt on this ship quite a bit Floating are not really a problem because of Hydro, but you know, you know, you never really know. Aiming systems modification as well for better dispersion, but as you can see, that still doesn't mean any good dispersion. And finally, I always choose proportion, unlike any cruiser, because I, I tend to really stop and go in them. Like, I never really roll around that much. Like, I generally stop in a lot of locations, so I find this more useful for me. I also recommend the Hydro over the AA because it's not like the AA is going to help you that much and the Hydro is pretty useful especially with its nice range. For the Captain, well I actually only have 13 points, I, I think it's the Captain I got with the ship, but I went for a fairly basic build, it's, it's like your standard cruiser build. I have incoming fire alert because it can be pretty useful to know if a battleship is firing at you. And so you know you have to angle, otherwise you're gonna be absolutely destroyed. Because getting citadels on this ship is easiest at long range, I feel like. With battleships, that is. Classic Adrenaline Rush <coughs> for the extra heal and the Hydro here, Superintendent. I'm not even sure if you can make all of the Hydros work with their reload, but whatever. And I finally go Concealment because... Well, the Concealment is quite hefty as it is a battle cruiser, but 11.5 is... It's fairly fine. It allows you to push in deep enough to where you can catch cruisers off guard. And I also have a jack of all trades. And I always start with priority target because priority target gives you a lot of information about like when DDs are firing torps at you or you know who's aiming at you. It's it's quite useful. So that's really it. I mean, there is really no special way to play this ship. I guess after this you can go for AA. The fire chance, I don't think that's very recommended. Actually, what is the fire chance on these guns? Because 21%. Like, that that really doesn't sound bad, but you saw how how little fires I was getting. So, yeah, not exactly the most useful. Fire prevention is actually not an awful choice either on this ship. And now, the thing is, right, with uh, the current clan battle season being tier 6, there are so many Grav space, so if in case you are a clown member and you play clown battles and you know you've been struggling with getting 
most of the use out of this ship there and just you know you don't feel like you're really getting your miles worth with this thing then hopefully this video helped you and uh, I have no idea what to say for the outro <laughs> I don't know how to leave this video god damn it